When was the last time you sailed to a world where mystery and enchantment collide? Where the modern and traditional live side by side? We are about to embark on that kind of cruise, a cruise of adventure. Hi, I'm Jake de Boer. And I'm Mika de Boer, and welcome to this special edition of the Travel Magazine. Join us aboard one of Holland America's elegant ships and explore the Orient and Southeast Asia, where you'll experience the contrasts of Hong Kong, Vietnam, Singapore, Bali, Darwin, Australia, with the final port of call, Cairns at the Great Barrier Reef. Holland America's 62-day Grand Orient and South Pacific cruise begins in Vancouver and sails to the spectacular scenery of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a bustling, thrilling, cosmopolitan city. Hong Kong is an international trading city. It's full of vibrancy, it's full of surprises, and it's a very nice mixture between the East and the West. Essentially, 98% of our population are Chinese. Only 2% are non-Chinese. And because of the fact that we have always been a, a major trading city in, in, the, in Asia, uh, it is very common for us to mingle and mix with, with foreign friends. Nathan Road is the shopping street of Hong Kong. It's situated in Kowloon Peninsula, very, very famous. It's, it's a must-do for all travellers. Shopping is the number one priority. We have a huge array of international goods to choose from at a very reasonable price. We emphasize that bargaining is part of the fun. And in Asia, not only in Hong Kong, bargaining is practiced fervently. The bird market is actually an extremely interesting pastime. Basically, before it was for the retiree, you know, the older generation used to take a bird in the hand and go yam cha, go dim sum. And this is very interesting, and they hang the bird on the windowsill and they will exchange the latest gossip. And nowadays, a lot of younger people have actually developed an interest in keeping pet birds, and bird keeping is actually a very good pastime, favoured by a lot of Hong Kong people. How much is your bird? How much money? Not, not for sale. Aberdeen is a famous landmark in Hong Kong. Aberdeen itself is a fishing village. A lot of boat people live inside the boat. The whole family lives there. The children do their homework there. There's also a television set inside the boat. They conduct a whole lifetime there. Nowadays, with urban development, Aberdeen is an interesting contrast between the old world and the new. And of course, we have the, the landmark within the landmark, which is the floating restaurant. Beautifully lit up restaurant. It's world famous, a must do for first time visitors. And of course, during lunchtime, they serve very good dim sum. The word dim sum means it, it's not a very huge meal. It's supposed to be a snack meal. So the lunch is had with a lot of um, Chinese tea and the little tidbits of food we call dim sum, essentially snacks. So that's why dim sum is very seldom served in the evening. It's normally served during lunchtime or at breakfast. These sticks are not used for eating, but for telling fortunes. Every day, thousands of Chinese come to the Wong Tai Sin Temple in the heart of Hong Kong. Will a marriage work? Will an investment be profitable? These people believe they can find the answer to any question here. An even more mystical experience may be a visit to the imposing Polin Monastery Buddha. This 200-ton bronze statue is overwhelming, and people of all beliefs are drawn to its immense presence. The nightlife in Hong Kong is a whole range of choices. 
Temple Street is our night market operating between 7 and midnight every night and it's an open-air night market essentially selling men's casual wear but also a lot of CD shops, all other gadgets, telephone sets, what have you. You name it, they probably have it. It's not a little bit like the flea market in, in, in a Western sense, but a little bit higher up. So it's a lot of choices for the locals and the, uh, and the visitors alike uh, after dinner. As the sun sets, our explorer's cruise leaves Hong Kong Harbor to what new adventures. Everybody is buying flowers. We are in Singapore. Do you want some flowers, sir? Beautiful flowers. We will be back with more of the travel magazine just after this, so stay with us. Next, the contrast of old and new Vietnam. We walk to the top of a mountain of solid marble and having a ball on board. The tradition of exploring the world by sea has been brought elegantly up to date by Holland America Line. On board you can relax or play. There is a wide choice of sports and activities and tempting international cuisine is never far away. This is the perfect escape. It's our second night on the ship and we've been invited to meet the captain and his executive staff at a formal welcome aboard reception. Shipboard entertainment is provided by internationally renowned artists, as well as our ship's multi-talented Indonesian crew. Every night a different show, a new experience. We continue sailing south to our next port of call, Da Nang, Vietnam. Da Nang is an important seaport in Southeast Asia and Vietnam's fourth largest city. Vietnam has recovered from years of war and its people welcome foreign tourists. The sublime beauty of the countryside is surprising and overwhelming. Just southeast of Da Nang is the ancient town of Hoi An. This quiet village was once a busy center of Vietnamese commerce. The Chinese established a trading post here in the 15th century. Later on, Japanese, Dutch, English, Portuguese, and French missionaries and merchants settled here. Overlooking Da Nang are the Marble Mountains, five peaks of solid marble. A steep path leads to some mysterious caves, which house Buddha statues and altars of worship. At the foot of the mountains, artisans sculpt the local marble into beautiful works of art. Below the Marble Mountains lies legendary China Beach, a very popular spot for both locals and tourists alike. The secluded beauty of China Beach remains unspoiled. The haunting beauty of Vietnam is a memory that stays with us as our ship sets its next course. If you missed an opportunity to shop on land, the ship has its own shops filled with gifts and souvenirs. The prices are competitive and tax and duty free. Holland America brings port lectures on board to brief passengers about each of our destinations. 
tonight, there is magic in the air, and the Oriental Mask Ball turns the ship into a fantasy world of spies and royalty. Our next stop is the exciting city-state of Singapore, where we are met with a traditional welcoming dance. It was British colonialist Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles who first recognized the island's potential importance to trade. In 1824, he established a British settlement declaring Singapore a free port. Today, Singapore is one of Asia's greatest commercial centers. For anyone who wants to get a feel of Singapore, even if it's just for a short stay, they should take a bum boat ride down the river, the Singapore River, to know a little bit about the history of our river because that will really like give you an idea of how Singapore actually started out. Singapore River crosses through the heart of the city and it is revered as the soul of Singapore. The statue of half fish, half lion Merlion guards the busy river mouth. Four main cultures combine in Singapore, British, Malaysian, Indian, and Chinese. And you can experience traditions from each, like this ancient Chinese tea ceremony at the tea shop, the tea house. The Chinese have made an art of tea making. The ritual requires patience, concentration, and understanding. Even the way you hold your teacup is significant. You hold it with three fingers, the thumb, the index, and the third finger. Am I doing it okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. As long well, as you don't you're just accommodating me. <laughs> this is very nice. The oldest Hindu temple in Singapore is Sri Mariamam, with its many multicolored gods and goddesses. Worshippers come to ask for forgiveness and to call upon the healing powers of Hindu deities. There are those who say that a visit to Little India is almost as good as a trip to India itself. These sculptures or these artifacts which you see here, um, this, for example, this Ganesha, is made of one solid teakwood tree by one sculptor, it took him one year, three months to make this. And the weight of this is 75 kilogram. And you see the intricate work of it. And it is inspirational, because none of these artifacts here are used with pictures or diagrams. I have to tell you, a fantastic way to explore the Orient. And you know, the whole Pacific area is on board a cruise ship. There's no doubt about it. How are you enjoying Holland America this time? Oh, I think this is a very interesting trip, you know, the Orient. I always wanted to do it yeah. on a cruise, it's easy. But why didn't you sip a little bit of this uh, tea? You think it, I need the herbal tea? Well, it's ma it's 24 herbs. It oh. looks like oil, but it's tea, and no. it will make us younger. Well, I need that more than you do, or the other way no, around. No, no, that's why you should drink that bowl. <laughs> Singapore does indeed offer the best of many worlds with its extraordinary mix of both ancient and modern cultures. From Singapore, our ship heads southeastward and across the equator, where tradition demands a sacrifice to King Neptune. Beautiful. I love you, Charlie. We will be back with more of the Travel Magazine just after this, so stay with us. It's our seventh day on board the New Amsterdam, and everyone gathers to take part in a special ceremony. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. 
Today we pay homage to Neptune, the father of the sea. Tradition calls for a tribute to King Neptune by those who are crossing the equator for the first time. The new Amsterdam, they cried, has entered your domain. The king of the sea must be honored in return for smooth waters. A crew member is chosen oh, as a sacrifice to Neptune. Is it the royal fish? Oh. Kiss the fish! Kiss, Kiss the, the fish! fish. With the ceremonial sacrifice complete, our safe passage through Neptune's domain is assured. Next on our explorer's cruise, Asia's most beautiful and enchanting island, Bali. Bali, the Isle of the Gods, is truly a paradise. Here, art, religion, and a sense of community combine to preserve a way of life long since lost in other parts of Indonesia. Bali is not immune to the pressures of modern day society, but away from the city, there is beauty, peace and harmony in the land and in its people. Rice, grown in sculptured paddies, is still harvested in the traditional way. Religion is important to the Balinese, and there are over 20,000 temples on the island. Just a short distance from Padang Bai, where our ship docks, is Koa Loa, the Bat Cave. The reason for the name is obvious. Over one million bats live here. In the town of Ubud, in the middle of the rainforest, we stop at Kupu Kupu for bami and nasi goreng fried rice and fried noodles. A traditional and delicious lunch. An important part of life on Bali is the dance. There are over 200 traditional dances. Every celebration and religious festival calls for the telling of an ancient legend of good or evil. <laughs> Bali truly is an island paradise. Back on board Holland America Line, the tradition of excellence continues. Our Indonesian and Filipino crew take care of every detail. And tonight, the chef has prepared an incredible chocolate extravaganza. We are on our way to another unique and exotic port, Darwin, on the north coast of Australia. Darwin is the capital of the Northern Territory, part of Australia's outback. This is untouched country. Birds like spectacular and magnificent can hardly do it justice. Darwin was devastated by a cyclone in 1974 and was completely rebuilt. It is a totally modern city. Amsterdam leaves Darwin for the last leg of our Grand Orient and South Pacific cruise. It has been a romantic and exotic trip, which all too soon will be over. Our final destination is the town of Cairns in Queensland. 
Great Barrier Reef is about 1,200 kilometers long. It's about, say, in American terms, from about San Francisco to Los Angeles. Area-wise, it's half the size of the state of Texas in the US, or the size of the UK and England combined. It's made up of 2,900 reefs, different reefs. It's not one continual reef. It's got a diversity of marine life that equals anywhere else in the world. If we didn't have the Great Barrier Reef, we wouldn't have the beaches we have on the northern coastline of Cairns because we wouldn't have a barrier to the waves and the storms that come in. The catamarans are designed for comfort and luxury and speed. They are quite stable, very stable in, in sort of rough conditions, so in any sort of weather you can get out to the reef. It's just a very convenient and luxurious way to get to the reef rather than a small boat in case you get seasick. Cairns is remarkable because not only are you 15 minutes from the Great Barrier Reef, you're also just 15 minutes from the rainforest. A duck boat is an odd but practical vehicle for exploring the wonders of this lush green wilderness. Skyrail is relatively new in Cairns and it's an amazing experience. For the first time, instead of being in the rainforest, you can be above the rainforest and see what's happening on top of the trees. So by going up the gondolas, you can see right underneath you what's going on, what's happening on the top of that canopy, because the rainforest is an amazing environment. Well, that's it for this edition of the Travel Magazine. I hope you've enjoyed our cruise as much as we have. I'm Jake de Boer. And I'm Mika de Boer. And join us again as we travel the world. <laughs>